Hey guys, uh, my name is IBM and today I want to uh, record uh, quantum physics for my students. So I will upload this on YouTube so that other students can also take advantage of uh, this topic. So this is the Cambridge International Education and this is going to be AS, I mean A-level physics 9702. Uh, quantum physics is entirely going to be paper 4. Just to remind you of the course units or the, uh, the topics you, you cover in uh, a level paper 4. Most of these have already been recorded in the videos. For example, circular motion has been recorded. You just check the playlist. Gravitational fields has been uh, recorded. Ideal gases has been recorded. Temperature has been recorded. Thermodynamics is recorded. Symphonic motion is recorded. Oscillations has been recorded. Electric fields has been recorded. I'll record magnetic fields and electromagnetic induction later on. Our capacitance has been recorded. Our alternating current has been recorded, but I recorded this including transformers, which may not really be um, uh, examined uh, in the new syllabus, but it's just for completeness of the topic. I have also recorded nuclear physics. You just check in the, uh, in the playlists. I'm now going to be recording quantum physics. I've recorded astrophysics and I will finally record medical physics later on. So today we are going to concentrate on quantum physics. Quantum physics is a very nice topic and it is really very easy. The questions there are almost the same because these are simple facts which we just try to um, understand and then think about. So let's go to quantum physics. Okay, so uh, we are introducing quantum physics. Mostly we shall be using uh, simple expressions. You will already see E equals to HF many times. And uh, the major equations we shall be looking at in this topic are the energy of a photon and Einstein's equation, which is HF equals to phi plus a half MeV V squared max. That is energy of a photon equals to the work function plus uh, the kinet maximum kinetic energy. So let this be lesson uh, let this be lesson one of quantum physics and let's introduce uh, the, the topic. So in our introduction in our introduction what is quantum physics? What is quantum physics and what is the origin of quantum physics? So quantum physics uh, is actually the study of the behavior of matter and energy in the molecular, atomic, nuclear, and smaller microscopic levels. So uh, in quantum physics, we just study matter and energy at microscopic levels. Matter and energy at microscopic levels. Remember we talked about, um, we looked at uh, uh, we looked at matter at nuclear level in a topic called nuclear physics. So in quantum physics, we explore concepts of matter and energy at molecular, atomic, nuclear, and smaller microscopic levels. It was uh, in the early 19th, in the early 20th century, uh, when the laws that govern my, my macroscopic objects were discovered not to be functioning uh, the same way, uh, 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 the same way as the same way as they would do in small, very small realms, that is, the laws that govern macroscopic objects were discovered not to function, the same way they would uh, function at molecular, atomic, nuclear, and smaller microscopic levels. So, then the term quantum then came in. So, quantum comes from the Latin, Latin word, which means how much. It comes from the Latin meaning of how much. Just like in uh, AS physics, you were talking about qua uh, qualitative and quantitative uh, uh, properties or observations. So to quantify something is to give like a number. So it's like how much is something that is uh, quantum. So quantum comes from the Latin word, which means uh, how much. And therefore, quantum refers to the discrete units of matter and energy. The discrete, the word discrete, a specific amount of matter and energy, discrete units of matter and energy that are predicted by and observed in quantum physics, as we shall uh, discover later on. Uh, scientists believe that even space and time, which appear to be extremely continuous, have smallest have smallest possible values. 
So um, scientists such as Albert Einstein believe that those things which we expect to be extremely or we know as extremely continuous are believed to have even the smallest possible values, so such as uh, space and time. So people think, uh, people thought that space and time were actually were actually absolute. But even though they are absolute, science believe uh, they have smallest uh, possible values. So as um, as scientists gained as scientists gained the technology to measure with great precision, strange phenomena were, was observed. Things that they never expected were, uh, were observed. That is where we experience the birth of quantum physics. So the birth of quantum physics is attributed to Max Planck's 1900 paper on black body radiation. Remember a black body, as we saw in astrophysics and cosmology, is a body which uh, absorbs all radiations falling on it without reflecting any, but it emits radiations in a full wavelength, in a full range of wavelength. So, Max Planck's paper on black body radiation led to the fact that uh, energy of electromagnetic radiation was existing in discrete units, which we shall later on call quanta, or which we shall later on call uh, photons. So, development of the field was later on di was done by Max Planck, Albert Einstein, Niels Bohr, Niel Bohr uh, Werner Heisenberg, Irene Schuldinger, and many others. Of course, in this topic, for this level, we shall only concentrate on Max Planck, Albert Einstein, and Neil Bohr, because we shall talk about uh, the Planck's constant. That's why we shall talk about Max Planck, or we shall, uh, add, we shall concentrate on Max Planck. We shall talk about Einstein's equation. That's why Albert Einstein is very important here. And we shall talk about Niels a nail Bohr's uh, model of the atom, and that's why uh, Bohr is very important in this introduction or in this topic of quantum physics. So, the birth of quantum physics is uh, attributed to Max Planck's paper in 1900, and his paper was about uh, energy emitted by a blacker body or energy radiated by a blacker body, as we shall see later on. So let's talk about uh, the particulate nature of matter. The particulate nature of matter. Around 1900, we have already said that uh, the birth of quantum physics was as a result of Max Planck's paper on black body, on a black body, on black body radiation. In 1900, Max Planck, with uh, a German physicist, suggests that the energy of electromagnetic waves was emitted, uh, emitted from a blacker body was quantized. It is not the first time you are hearing of the word quantized. You must have heard of this word in topics such as electricity, where you saw that charge was always quantized. Uh, charge was existing in small discrete amounts, which were multiples of the elementary charge. So the energy of electromagnetic waves or the energy of electromagnetic radiations uh, which were emitted by a black body was always quantized according to Max Planck's paper. And this means this means that the energy emitted is not continuous. It doesn't take on continuous values, but instead it consists of a discrete amounts of packets called quanta. To understand uh, the meaning of uh, the difference between uh, energy being quantized and energy being continuous, I will demonstrate this with a simple diagram. Let's assume an object is to be moved from the floor up to this point here, let's say up to this height here, and there are two options. One option could be the taking the stairs until we reach the top. So we lift the object by taking the stairs until we reach the top. Another option is moving the object along an inclined plane up to the top. So for the first case A, the object is either on the floor, on this step, on this step, on this step, on this step up to the highest point. It cannot be between the two steps. It can't be between two steps. So here we say the gravitational potential energy is going to have specific values. Yet in the second example, in, in B, by using an inclined plane, 
the height gradually increases, which means the gravitational potential energy of the object as it is moved upwards continuously increases. So in A, we would say energy is quantized or energy is discrete. In B, we would say energy is continuous. So according to Max Planck, the energy emitted by electromagnetic radiations was not continuous, but instead it consists of specific amounts or it consists of a discrete amount or this, uh, it exists in small packets which we call quanta. So energy of electromagnetic radiation exists in small packets that we call quanta. Okay. So in 1905, Albert Einstein extended Planck's idea and postulated that light is emitted in these packets, which are Max Planck had already suggested. In other words, light is emitted in these packets called quanta, or which we shall later on call photons. And it is, and according to Albert Einstein, light remains in these packets until it is absorbed. In other words, light is emitted in small packets, and it stays in those small packets and it is absorbed. It is also absorbed as small packets. And these packets can be called quanta or can be called photons. So the idea, this idea of quantization of electromagnetic waves into packets of energy, which are now going to be called photons, suggests a particulate nature of electromagnetic radiation. Particulate is coming from particle. So it's like electromagnetic radiation has a particle-like properties because it is believed that these photons are actually particles. So the idea of quantization of electromagnetic waves into packets of energy called photons suggests a particulate nature of electromagnetic radiation. So the existence of photons that make up light or electromagnetic radiation is evidence that light has particle-like properties. Therefore, we, are, we can now define a photon as a quantum because a, a quantum is singular so a photon the photon is a quantum or a packet of energy of an electromagnetic radiation so we have defined a photon as a packet or a quantum of energy of electromagnetic radiation a packet or a quantum of energy of light a packet or a quantum of energy of electromagnetic radiation that is what we are going to call a photon so the energy of electromagnetic radiation as we have mentioned exists in small packets and these small packets are called photons or you can call them quanta so know the difference between quanta is uh, quanta is plural and the quantum is singular so what does this energy depend on? What does the energy of the electromagnetic radiation depend on? What does the energy of a photon depend on? So the energy of a photon is, uh, or is, ob is, absor is observed to be directly proportional to the frequency of the electromagnetic radiation or, or of the electromagnetic wave. In other words, energy is directly proportional to frequency. And if I remove the proportionality sign, the energy is going to be equal to a constant uh, times f. So the constant is going to be h. In memory of Planck's constant, the, I mean in memory of Max Planck, the constant h is named after Max Planck and we call it a Planck's constant. So hence, uh, the energy of a photon is thus given by this expression here. Energy is equal to e h, h times f. And we shall always use this expression for several calculations to, under, or to, to calculate the energy of uh, electromagnetic radiation which means for a single photon its energy is going to be hf and if electromagnetic radiation has several photons then total energy of electromagnetic radiations will be uh, the number of photons of electromagnetic radiation times the energy of each photon so i want you to notice that the equation e equals to hf tells us the relationship between a particle property where E is the energy of a particle, which is the energy of a photon, and a wave property where F from AS, we know that F is frequency and it's normally a property of a wave. So it's like this equation links the wave-like properties, the particle-like properties of electromagnetic radiation. So it's like 
there is a relationship, there is a link between um, electromagnetic, uh, there's a link between um, energy of a photon and uh, the frequency of a wave. So it gives us an impression that electromagnetic radiation has both wave-like properties and particle-like properties as we shall discuss under what we shall call the wave-particle duality. So the equation E equals to EHF tells us the relationship between a particle property and a wave property. The particle property, when um, we're talking about energy of a photon, and we're assuming that the photon is a particle, and yet frequency is a property of a wave, and we're assuming that the, uh, the photon could also be having a wave-like properties. So the energy of a photon depends on the frequency of the wave, and therefore, electromagnetic radiation can be uh, assumed to have both wave-like properties and particle-like properties. Just to remind ourselves from our AS physics, we know that the equation for the general wave equation V equals lambda times F, where lambda is the wavelength and F is the frequency. Because we are dealing with electromagnetic radiations, which we know that they all travel at the same speed of light, then I will use a C for V, so C is going to be lambda times F. So it means uh, where there is F, I can also put C over lambda, which means that the energy can also or will also be quoted as HC divided by the wavelength. So sometimes we shall use energy, we shall have energy as HC over wavelength. So it is called Einstein's relation and applies to all electromagnetic waves. So this equation E equals HF is called Einstein's relation and applies to all electromagnetic waves. E, H, is, H is called Planck's constant and F is called uh, the frequency. So from the equation C equals lambda F, it implies that F is C over lambda. Therefore, we can also uh, modify the equation E equals to HF to become E equals to HC over wavelength, which we shall always use in calculations too. H, as I've already mentioned, is called Planck's constant, named after Max Planck and whose value uh, was estimated by Planck, and it is approximately 6.63 times 10 to the power of minus uh, 34. This constant is always given in the list of uh, constants in the exam. So H is equal to 6.63 times 10 to the power of minus 34 joule seconds, and it is called uh, Planck's constant. Planck's, Planck's assumption suggests that the energy of any molecular vibration could be some whole number multiple of HF, with HF being the smallest amount of energy. So if molecular vibration or electromagnetic radiation has several photons, then the total energy of uh, the molecular vibration or the total energy of the, uh, the electromagnetic radiation could be given by NHF, where N, because the energy is quantized, energy exists in discrete amounts, which are multiples of HF, then N should be a whole number. I mean, N should be a, a number such as 1, 2, 3, 4, and so on and so forth. So we say energy exists in small amounts, which are multiples of HF, with HF being the smallest energy of a photon, of a single photon, or the energy of a single, a single photon. N is called the quantum number, and remember we have said quantum means a discrete amount, specific amount, as opposed to continuous. N is a quantum number. N is called the quantum number. So the, this idea is what we often call Planck's quantum hypothesis. So the idea that energy exists in small amounts, which are multiples of HF, is what we normally call Planck's quantum hypothesis. Energy exists, energy of electromagnetic radiation or energy of any molecular vibration exists in um, uh, exists in small amounts, which are multiples of HF, is what we call Planck's quantum hypothesis. Energy does not take on any continuous values. 
energy takes on values which are multiples of a, a, the smallest amount which is given by HF. So if we have several photons making up electromagnetic radiation, then we can agree that the total energy of electromagnetic radiation is the number of photons times HF, with HF being the smallest amount of energy available. Okay, so you note that the energy of a photon is inversely proportional to the wavelength, as we have already seen, because when we used H, when we used the C equals lambda F, F was equal to C over lambda, and energy was equal to HC over wavelength. So the energy of a photon was inversely proportional to the wavelength, even though it was directly proportional to the frequency. After all, frequency is inversely proportional to wavelength. And from the electromagnetic spectrum, which we already saw in AS physics, the short wavelength X-ray photon is far more energetic than the long wavelength uh, photon of light. X-rays have a shorter wavelength and visual light has uh, a longer wavelength than X-rays. Remember from the electromagnetic spectrum, uh, Reed's mother is visiting Uncle Xavier's garden. Uh, moving from radio waves to gamma rays, here the wavelength is decreasing. In other words, radio waves have the longest wavelength and gamma rays have the shortest wavelength. So it means uh, gamma rays will have the highest energy because energy is inversely proportional to wavelength. Radio waves have the smallest energy because energy is inversely proportional to wavelength. And in fact, moving from radio waves to gamma rays, the frequency is increasing. Gamma rays having the highest frequency and yet energy is equal to HF. Gamma rays with the highest frequency therefore have the highest energy. Examples. The examples are direct. I'll try just to give you an example. Find the frequency and energy of a photon of wavelength 500 nanometers. I'll just use the spaces here because I don't want to create more space since these are very easy equations. So find um, the frequency and find the frequency and energy of a photon of wavelength 500 nanometers. So to start with the frequency, we have already seen that frequency is equal to speed divided by wavelength. Uh, because a photon is light and the speed of light is 3 times 10 to the power of 8, divide by the wavelength, which is 500 nanometers, that is 500 times 10 to the power of minus 9, then this is going to be equal to 6.0 times 10 to the power of 14 hertz. So that is the frequency. Then we can check uh, the energy. The energy of a photon is equal to HF. So I can use the frequency I've obtained, or if I don't want to use that, I can use um, HC divided by wavelength. So this energy is going to be 6.63 times 10 to the power of minus 34 for Planck's constant, then times C, which is 3 times 10 to the power of 8. And I will divide this by the wavelength, which is 500 times 10 to the power of minus 9. So this is going to give us, uh, this is going to give us, the energy, I'll just check this, 6.63, exponent minus 34, times 3 exponent 8, Divide by 500 exponent minus 9. So I think this answer is correct. 3.98 times 10 to the power of minus 19 joules. Okay, question 2. 
A light source emits photons of red, wavelength 700 nanometers, while a radio antenna emits uh, FM, electromagnetic radiation of wavelength 3 meters. So this is most like a radio waves. What is the energy of a photon of the red light? So energy of a photon, we know that energy of a photon is H, F, which is HC divided by wavelength, which is going to be 6.63 times 10 to the power of minus 34 times the speed of light, which is 3 times 10 to the power of 8 divided by the wavelength, which is 700 nanometers, that is 700 times 10 to the power of minus 9. So I'll press my calculator. From my college data, this is 2, 2.8 times 10 to the power of minus 19 joules. What is the energy of a photon of FM electromagnetic radiation? So similar energy of a photon of FM radiation, I'll just take 6. 0.63 times 10 to the power of minus 34, that is Planck's constant, times C, which is 3, times 10 to the power of 8, that is speed of light, divided by the wavelength of Fm, which is 3.0. So I'll just press my calculator. So from my calculator, this is 6.63 times 10 to the power of minus 26 joules. So of course, you notice that red light has a shorter wavelength than um, radio waves. So, and the energy is inversely proportion to the wavelength. That makes sense that this energy is smaller than the first energy that we got. Calculate the ratio, photon energy of red over photon energy of FM radiation. So the ratio is simply going to be equal to 2.8 times 10 to the power of minus 19 divided by 6.63 times 10 to the power of minus 26. So this is giving us approximately 4.2, about 4.2 times 10 to the power of 6. About 4.2 times 10 to the power of 6. So this is the ratio. It will depend on um, what you round, how you rounded off the previous answer. If you use 2.84, you may get 4.3 instead. But of course, the method is correct. A laser of output 2 milliwatts produces a monochromatic light of frequency 7.5 times 10 to the power of 10 hertz. Culture the rate at which the photons are emitted from the laser. We want the rate at which the photons are emitted from, from uh, the laser. Okay, so I'm going to use, I don't have enough space, but I'm going to use this space here. I will just economize the space here. I can use this space and I rub after. So we want to find um, the culture the rate at which rate at which photons are emitted. I think rate at which photons are emitted, that is the number of photons emitted per unit time. The number of photons emitted per unit time. So of course, we know that energy is equal to power times time. 
So I know that power is equal to energy, which is going to be total energy divided by time. So if there are several photons, that means total energy. Remember, each photon, energy of one photon is HF. So it means total energy is going to be HF times the number of photons, which I'm going to call capital which I'm going to call capital uh, capital which I'm going to call uh, n capital n times hf so total energy e total is going to be the total number of photons times the energy of each photon which means which means that power is going to be equal to total number of photons times h times f then this is divided by t okay Remember, I want the number of photons per unit time. That is the rate at which photons are emitted. So I want to make n over t the subject. So n over t the subject is going to be the power divided by h f. That is the power divided by the energy of a single photon. So by simple substitution, the power has been given as 2.0 times 10 to the power of minus 3. Divide this by Planck's constant, which is 6.63 times 10 to the power of minus 34. Then we multiply this by frequency, which is given as 7.5 times 10 to the power of 14. So I'll press my calculator to check. So this is giving us the rate to be 4.0, about 4.02 times 10 to the power of 15. So that is the rate. Those are the number of photons emitted per second. Okay. Then how will the rate of the photon emission change if the same laser were to produce light of lower frequency? The same laser were to produce light of lower frequency. Notice from this part of the equation that the number of photons emitted per unit time is inversely proportional to the frequency. They say it is the same laser. The same laser were to produce a light of lower frequency. So it means uh, the power is the same. Planck's, Planck's constant is just a constant. So because uh, the frequency is lower, that means more photons are going to be emitted so since P and H are constants, N over T inversely proportioned F. Hence, if the frequency is reduced, it means the rate of photon emission increases. So lower frequency means uh, the rate of uh, photon emission has been increased. Then, if a laser which produces a monochromatic light of frequency 7.5 times 10 to the power of 14 hertz can emit uh, 1.0 times 10 to the power of 18 photons per second. What is the power rating? So this is also a simple question. They have given us N over T, that is the number of photons emitted per second, and we want to find the power rating. So the power is going to be number of photons emitted per second times the energy of each photon, which is H times F. So this is going to be n over t is given as 1.0 times 10 to the power of 18, then times Planck's constant, which is 6.63, times 10 to the power of minus 34, then times uh, the frequency, which is 7.5, times 10 to the power of 14. And from my calculator, this is giving me 0 0.50 watts. So the power rating is going to be 0 0.05 watts. So this was part A. Then a part B, I said for part B, the, uh, the power is constant, H is constant. And uh, N over T, that is the number of photons per unit time is inversely proportional to frequency. 
but if the frequency is reduced, then the number of photons increases by unit time. Then this is part C, where they give us n over t, that is the number of photons per second. So we just substitute in the equation and find uh, the power rating. Calculate the energy of a high energy gamma photon, frequency 10 to the power of uh, 10 to the power of 26 hertz. So energy is equal to h times f, 6.63 times 10 to the power of minus 34. That's Planck's constant. Then f is 10 to the power of 26, which I think this is correct. This is 6.63 times 10 to the power of minus 8 joules. Visible light has wavelengths in the range 400 nanometers to 700 nanometers. Capture the energy of a photon of red light and a photon of violet light. So for red, energy is equal to H. C over wavelength. So for red, it is going to be 6.63 times 10 to the power of minus 34 times 3 times 10 to the power of 8 divided by the wavelength, which is 400 times 10 to the power of minus 19. So I'll check my culture. This is for red. Six point six three exponent minus thirty four times three exponent eight divide by four hundred exponent minus nine. Actually, this is uh, this is violet, not red. 400 nanometers, that is violet. So for violet, I think this is violet. 5.0 times 10 to the power of uh, minus 19. So this is violet. Then for red, I'll do the same for red. So that would be 6.63 times 10 to the power of minus 34, then times 3 exponent 8. Divide by the wavelength of red, which is 700 times 10 to the power of minus 9. So this is red. So these answers are correct, red and violet. Determine the wavelength. Determine the wavelength of the electromagnetic waves for each photon below. And and hence identify the region of the electromagnetic spectrum to which each belongs. The photon energy is a 10 to the power of minus uh, 12 joules. So they want us to determine the wavelength of the electromagnetic wave for each of the photons and identify uh, the region of the electromagnetic spectrum. Remember for electromagnetic spectrum, Reed's mother is uh, visiting Uncle Xavier's garden. I'll just check one and I leave the rest for the students. So I'll check uh, 10 to the power of minus 20. So energy is 10 to the power of minus 20. So energy equals to Hc over wavelength. It is easier to identify the region using wavelength because we are used to uh, the wavelength of visible light. So uh, using this equation, it implies that the wavelength is going to be equal to 6.63 times 10 to the power of minus 34 times 3 times 10 to the power of times 10 to the power of 8 divided by the energy which is given as 10 to the power of minus 20. I'm just trying out this one. So 10 to the power of minus 20 
6.63 exponent minus 34 times 3 exponent 8 divided by exponent minus 20. So this wavelength is 1 point, it's actually about 2.0 times 10 to the power of minus 5 meters and of course this is infrared this one is infrared so uh, how do we get those regions remember from your AS physics um, we use visible light so visible ranging from red to violet this is 7 times 10 to the power of minus 7 meters the other one is 4 times 10 to the power of minus 7 meters. On this side, we have, um, after visible light, I mean, after violet, we have uh, ultraviolet. We have X-rays. We have gamma. On the other side, we have, after red light, we have infrared. We have micro. And we have uh, radio waves. So 10 to the power of minus 5 is on this side because wavelength increases towards the other towards the left hand side. So here wavelength increases, here wavelength decreases, this side wavelength decreases, this side wavelength increases. So 10 to the power of minus 5 is after is on the right on the left hand side of red light. So it is most likely going to be infrared. Okay. So you can check all the others. You can check 10 to the power of minus 12, 10 to the power of minus 15. You can check 10 to the power of minus 18 and see if it is infrared. I mean, uh, and see if it is ultraviolet. You can check 10 to the, we have checked 10 to the power of minus 20 and it is infrared. You can also check 10 to the power of uh, minus 25 and see if it is radio waves. Remember the wavelength of radio wave is between 10 to the power of 4 to around 0. Uh, 0 0.1 meters so you can also check that and lastly a 1.0 milli, uh, milliwatt laser produces red light of wavelength 6.48 times 10 to the power of minus 7 meters Calculate how many photons the laser produces per second. Number of photons per second. So they've given us the power. Of course, we know that power equals to energy. So it will be total energy divided by time. And the total energy is equal to the total number of photons times the energy of each photon, which is HF. Then divide by T. But remember, F is a C over lambda. They want us to find the number of photons per second. So I'll make N T the subject. But before making N T the subject, remember that the frequency is equal to C divided by lambda. So this means the power will be equal to N T, N over T times H C divided by wavelength. So I'm going to make this the subject. So making that the subject n over t is going to be equal to power uh, times wavelength divided by hc. So the power is 1.0 times 10 to the power of minus 3 times the wavelength which is 6.48 times 10 to the power of minus 7. Then I divide this by uh, h which is 6.63 times 10 to the power of minus 34, then times speed of light, which is 3, times 10 to the power of 8. I'll just check with my calculator.
So this is 3.26 times 10 to the power of 15. So that is the number of photons per second. Okay, I want lesson one to end there. Lesson one is just an introduction. So basically we have just used the equation E equals to H F and E equals to H C over lambda. And we have also been able to define a photon as a quantum or a packet of energy of electromagnetic radiation. Until next time, bye bye. Without you, I never could have moved away. But now I seek what you teach.